Hey guys, um, if you are new to Top Gun Tips, my name is Samantha and I am the Editor-in-Chief here. I do lots of videos every week for you guys from product reviews to how-to videos. And as you can tell, this is going to be a how-to video on how to bathe your dog. This is our Chocolate Lab Sadie and um, Sadie's very well behaved in the tub so that's why I chose her out of our three dogs. Um, Sadie also is a difficult coat for um, bathing a dog. She has a, a thick double coat which is um, standard with Labradors. So I'm going to show you today how to go about um, bathing your dog. And the first thing that you want to do before you even get them in the tub is give them a thorough brushing. You really want to brush through any mats, any tangles, um, any burrs or anything that might be stuck in there fur. You want to brush all of that out before you bathe them. Um, and that's going to help you a lot while you're bathing. So you want to make sure you brush them. Uh, there's plenty of information on our site on how to brush a dog and um, the different types of dog brushes and things like that if you're unsure of that for your dog. So you're going to go ahead and brush your dog and then get them into um, the bathtub or the sink. If you have a small breed, some people bathe their dogs outside using a hose, um, but that's a very difficult thing. And if you do that, you may want another person just to hold your dog. Um, a lot of times being squirted with the hose scares your dog. So uh, you may want a second person if you're going to do it outside. Um, and the other thing some people do is if you bathe a lot of dogs, if you have like, we have three dogs, so it seems like somebody always needs a bath in our house. Um, so you could go ahead and buy a grooming tub if you wanted to do that um, as well if that is an option if you find that to be easier. And grooming tubs are set up higher um, so that you don't have to bend over um, and wash your dog and um, have a sore back and uh, they are designed specifically for bathing dogs so it's a lot easier for you uh, and a lot easier for your pet to use a grooming tub. So those are your options for bathing. Obviously I just use our bathtub in our regular bathroom. Um, so that's where we are. And now I'm gonna go ahead and um, begin bathing Sadie because I have already brushed through her fur. So what you wanna do first is make sure that you're using lukewarm water. Dogs are more sensitive to hot water than we are. So if the water feels like it's a good shower temperature for you, if you stick your hand in and say, oh yeah, that's good, it might be too hot for your dog. So what you wanna think about is, um, think of the water that you would run if you were giving a baby a bath. You want it to be just lukewarm. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that temperature now. Good, and I'm going to go ahead and, whoops. yeah, that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse Sadie, and you want to go ahead and make sure that you get all over their body. You want to do everywhere except for their face, um, and I don't do the top of their head either. I usually just wipe that down with a washcloth um, to make sure that they don't get any soap or water in their eyes. So as you can tell, again with Sadie, she has a thick double coat, so I have to really work the water in to make sure that it gets down all the way to her skin. Um, if you're wondering what this shower head tool that I'm using is, this is a product called the Pet Shower from MIU Pet. Um, I have done a review on this product that's on our website, and you can find the company online as well, um, MIU Pet, and I use this shower head i really like it um i'm going to show you in a minute they have many other shower heads as well not other companies make other shower heads um and specifically for dogs so i like this one that with the push of a button it turns on and off that's really convenient and easy uh, when you're reading a dog and I also like that it has these little prongs on the bottom that really work down in um, to get your dog wet so that's something to think about if you're going to be beating your dog a lot as well. So Sadie's nice and wet now. Um, I'm going to use a dog shampoo. This is the kind that I choose. Um, you want to make sure definitely that you get a shampoo that is specifically formulated for dogs. Um, human shampoo on dog skin is a big no-no. It is not made for dogs. 
We, our skin um, requires a different pH balance than a dog's, so if you're using a shampoo made for humans, it's pH balanced for humans, and it's going to dry out your dog's skin. It can cause a lot of problems um, from rashes and dry skin itchiness, um, and it really could do damage to your dog's fur and coat. So you do not, do not, do not, do not use sh human shampoo on dogs. Buy a dog shampoo. Um, when it comes to dog shampoo, and again, there's plenty of information on our website about this, um, I am very passionate about this, so I'm going to try not to stand on my soapbox for very long, but um, you really want to buy a shampoo that's going to be healthy, safe, and effective for your dog. And you might think, of course, if it's a dog shampoo, if it's sold at the pet store, that it's going to be safe and healthy for your dog. That is not true. A lot of the cheaper shampoos that you find are made with artificial ingredients. They're made with sulfates, parabens, lots of chemicals, lots of toxins. Um, one of my favorite things to, to see when I go into the pet store is that the pet shampoo on the shelf, a lot of it is these crazy bright colors. There's hot pink, there's bright blue and bright green. Those aren't natural colors. Those are artificially made that color to draw your attention and get you to buy that. But if it's a strange color like that, that is your first sign that this shampoo is not going to be healthy for your dog's skin. And you want to make sure you buy a shampoo that's going to be sensitive to his skin, pH balance for him, as well as safe. You don't want the toxins, you don't want the chemicals. Those things will leach through the skin into your dog's system. And over time, that can lead to some very serious um, health issues, anything as far as uh, dry skin and dull coat um, to cancers. They, these these kinds of products have been linked to cancers long term. So you need to be very aware of the products that you're buying for your dog and what is in them. Um, I recommend buying a natural shampoo, something that's plant-based, that's going to be much easier on your dog's skin and better for them in the long run. Um, it, it is going to be a bit more expensive, but it's shampoo. You're going to get tons of uses out of it in the long term. That bottle of shampoo might last you three or four months and you're only paying an extra five dollars for it. If that's going to be healthier for your dog, in my opinion, that extra five dollars is just no question at all. So keep that in mind. Um, this is the shampoo that I use. I don't recommend a certain brand or a certain type of shampoo. And the simple fact is um, every dog needs a different shampoo. So what you really should do if you are not aware of your dog's skin and coat type, you want to have a conversation with your veterinarian, have a conversation with a professional groomer. Take your dog in, have him professionally groomed, talk to the groomer about his skin, talk to them about his coat type um, and the types of grooming products, specifically shampoo, that are going to be best for him. Um, I use a shampoo. This one for me is an uh, itch relief. This is a plant-based all-natural shampoo and it's for dry flaky skin because um, Sadie has dry flaky skin, so it's got um, chamomile in it and things like that that are going to be um, that are going to soothe her itchy skin. If your dog needs something like that, you want to look for that. If your dog has a long coat that's prone to mats and tangles, you might want to buy um, a shampoo that's going to make their uh, coat a little bit smoother and um, foster those natural oils that keep it um, from tangling and um, becoming dull. So. Lots of different products out there. Make sure you find a dog shampoo that is going to cater to your dog's individual needs. And again, if you need help with that, get help with that. Ask your vet, ask a professional groomer. So you have your shampoo. Um, Sadie obviously isn't wet, as wet as she was a minute ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet her again and show you uh, the way that you should be working this through your dog's coat. Sadie. You want to make sure you're talking to your dog. Give them lots of praise. Um, again, Sadie's very used to having that, so she's very well behaved. Not all dogs are just going to sit here in the tub for you. Um, and typically, I don't let Sadie sit here. I make her stand up um, because you want to be able to get both sides of your dog. But for the point of this video, I, she is being very well behaved, and I'm just going to let her sit here without pestering her. Um, and you guys will be able to see still be able to see how to be the dog, um, but traditionally I would have her standing so that I can make sure that I get both sides and all the way underneath her, um, and she'll stand up in a minute once I start rubbing this 
on. Um, so you just, I put a line of the shampoo right down the dog's back. You don't want to overload the shampoo uh, because you want to make sure that you're able to rinse it all out without too much of a hassle. So if you're putting on half a bottle of shampoo, it's really going to take you a long time uh, to get that out of your dog's fur. So your shampoo is just like your shampoo. It's going to start to lather. You really want to make sure, use your fingers, get down in there and massage it all the way into your dog's coat. This is a lot easier if you have a dog with a single coat um, or a very thin coat. Again, um, I chose Sadie today. She has a very thick double coat, so it takes me a while to work this down in. Depending on your dog and his coat type, um, it could take you anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes to work the shampoo in. So, um, Really make sure, you know, bathing is something that is not going to be done quickly, um, but it's something that's going to be worth it if you do it properly. So work it in there, work it all the way down to your skin. Uh, and then what a lot of people don't realize is that you need to let the shampoo sit on your dog's skin and in his coat. Um, if you are, say, for example, with Sadie, like I just mentioned, um, I use a soothing shampoo because she is, she has dry skin and she's itchy. Um, so if I rub this in for two minutes and then I just go ahead and rinse it out, that shampoo, the natural um, essential oils and the, the good beneficial things that are in that shampoo are not going to be helping Sadie at all. Sometimes you want to just re-wet their skin if it, I mean their coat if it dries out a little bit. Um, good girl, Sadie. If it dries out a little bit, you're not going to be able to work the shampoo in as well. So give her another little rinse down. When I do underneath Sadie, I put a little bit of shampoo in my hands. And then, then I go ahead and wash underneath her. Um, and you want to make sure that you wash underneath. You want to make sure that you wash their tail and their anal region. Um, there are obviously a lot of bacteria and things can build up back there. You want to make sure that you wash um, in their armpits, ear, down their legs, um, all over. Like I said, you want to get every part of their body and make sure that you really do a great job um, getting in there and working it in. And you are going to want to just now, Sadie has it all works through her um, and you still want to pet them, rub it in, um, and let that shampoo sink in there so that it can really get in there and do its job and sit there. So usually what I do, obviously right now I'm talking to you guys, but usually what I will do is um, I just continue to rub them and talk to them and, you know, soothe them and make them see that, you know, this bath is okay, you're not. Um, my dogs a lot of times whenever anything, if something scares them or things like that, I would say, it's all right, you're okay. Um, so I tell them the same thing when they're on the top, try and calm them and soothe them as much as you can. And you're gonna wanna let that shampoo set in your dog. Um, if you can do it for 10 minutes, that's gonna be really ideal. Um, not all dogs, again, are as well behaved as Sadie, so you might not be able to get the full 10 minutes. Um, obviously, I'm not being as thorough as I should with uh, Sadie right now, but for the point of this video, I don't want you guys to sit here all afternoon either. Back up, good girl, good girl. So you're gonna wanna make sure you get both sides of your dog, reach over at this side, all down their legs, underneath, everywhere besides really, um, as I said, the, uh, the face and the top of the head. Um, you can go ahead and wipe those down with a washcloth after you are done with the bath because you don't want to risk getting anything in their eyes. Um, so again, I use the shower head that has those little prongs that gets down in and you can see the shampoo um, rinsing off Sadie. Now, rinsing probably sounds like the easiest part of the bath, but you really need to make certain that you're rinsing 100% of the soap out of your dog's skin. If you are leaving any um, soap, in there, sorry, I'm going to back up again, big girl. I know, I know, I know. You're all right. Good girl. 
Um, you really want to make sure that you're rinsing all of that soap out. If you are leaving soap behind, um, it's going to cause your dog's skin to dry out. It's going to cause itchiness. Um, so you really want to rinse very, very well. Run your fingers through it. Make sure that there is no soap left. Um, that's another benefit to buying a high quality shampoo is that you um, you get a shampoo that's going to rinse out a lot easier. It doesn't have all the, the chemicals and the toxins that make it hang around um, on your dog's skin and in his fur and his coat for longer periods of time. Um, a lot of dog owners think that if it lathers up really big and you know if it sticks in your dog's coat then it's going to be a really high quality shampoo um, but that is actually not the case those things happen because of the um, artificial ingredients that are in those shampoos and i know back up big girl good girl um, and when they stick in your dog's skin that's actually a very bad thing um, because again it's going to cause the itching and uh, the discomfort so that's something that you don't want um, and it's something that those cheaper shampoos um, it's kind of a, a trick that they use because that stuff sticks in your dog's skin your dog is itchy your dog's uncomfortable you're going to give him another bath so it's really um, it's too bad that a lot of companies are not more apt to provide products that are safe and healthy um, and they just aren't in it for the money and they want to make a shampoo that um, you're going to be using time and time again so if it bothers your dog's skin um, in a subtle way like that you're going to continue using that shampoo more to give your dog more bath uh, so you're um, you're all rinsed through and then what you want to do is obviously dry your dog because you don't want a huge mess in your home. Um, nope. I know you did so good for so long though. You're doing really well. You are good girl. Good girl. So I just use a towel um, to towel dry our dogs and then um, I just let them go out and shake around. We have a big yard so they go outside and shake around and you, I know you're doing good girl. Good girl. And dry themselves. So give them a thorough towel drying. Make sure you get underneath. There. Now go ahead and let's see the outcome. And then you're going to have a bit to clean up in your bathroom probably. Uh, but I'll wipe that down very quickly. So that is how you bathe your dog. Um, if you do choose to uh, dry your pet with a towel like I do, that's great. Um, and it's it's obviously safe and effective. Um, if you don't choose a towel dry and you want a blow dry, just make sure that you purchase a blow dryer that's specifically made for dogs. And that's the same reason as the heat from the water. Your dog is very sensitive to heat, so you want to make sure that you buy a blow dryer that is um, on a level that is acceptable for our canines because the ones that are made for humans are going to be too hot for your dog. Um, so you definitely want to check on that. Um, I have a few other tips here that I wrote down for you guys that I just want to make sure um, that I tell you. Why don't we talk about um, how often to bathe your dogs? That's one of the questions that came in from a reader um, that I wanted to touch on in this video. And most dogs should be okay with baths once a month. Um, some dogs can go longer than that. Some dogs need it more frequently. Um, there are dogs with water repellent coats, um, dogs with double coats like Sadie. You wanna, you don't wanna bathe them as often. Um, those coats make their skin makes a lot of natural oils um, to keep their coat healthy, and the more you bathe them, you get rid of those natural oils. So um, those types of dogs maybe don't bathe as often. Um, and then there are dogs that need it. Um, for example, Basset hounds um, can be a little bit more of a stinky breed. They might need it more regularly. So you really, it's going to depend on your dog's um, breed but it's also going to depend on his age his activity level things like that so um again if you're unsure really the only time that your dog needs to be bathed is if he's 
dirty, noticeably dirty, if he goes out and rolls in the mud, um, or if he smells. If he's, if you notice a stinky odor coming from him, um, then he's going to need to have a bath. Um, but otherwise than that, um, there are grooming wipes and things like that. You can wet down a washcloth, wipe him off if he, um, for example, like our dogs dig a lot and they'll get mud on their face. I just wet down a washcloth and wipe it. Um, because you really, you don't want to bathe them any more than you need to and remove those natural oils from their coat. So, um, if you have questions about that, again, talk with your veterinarian. It's best to talk to a professional groomer. If there's a local groomer in your area that will have a conversation with you, that's awesome. Uh, if not, just pay for it one time. Go in, have your dog professionally groomed, sit there while your dog is being groomed, speak with the groomer, have a conversation, learn as much as you can about your dog's coat and his individual needs, um, ask for some tips and tricks, that kind of stuff. Usually if you're paying for the grooming section, session, they are more apt to give you those types of um, tips. So um, make sure that if you have questions about how often to feed your dog, you do ask um, a professional. So I just want to make sure that I touched on everything that I wanted to touch on. I think so. Um, so you, that's how you bathe your dog. Um, make sure that you're using the proper products. Um, if you would like additional products, if you're grooming dogs often, um, I mentioned like the grooming tubs, um, the special shower head like I have, any of that kind of stuff. If you have, for example, we have three dogs. Somebody in our house is almost always being bathed. It seems like I give tons of dog baths every year. So for what I pay for a shower head, it's certainly worth it. Um, if you're going to use it, it's probably going to be worth it to you as well. So keep that in mind, um, take it into consideration. And, um, you know, if you want to spend the extra money on those products, you absolutely can. But if you are on a budget, just make sure that you're buying the proper grooming products. The right shampoo, conditioners if your dog needs it, um, any type of product that you're using on your dog's coat, it's going to be getting into his skin as well. And if you're using those cheaper products, um, the toxins, the chemicals can leach through. So you really, really want to be very careful about the products that you choose um, to groom that your dog with. So use the proper products, uh, use the right temperature water, use lukewarm water. Um, and when you're drying, again, be very careful, stay away from human um, products made for humans, stay away from human shampoos, stay away from human blow dryers, um, use products that are geared towards your dog. Um, if you have any other comments, questions, please let me know. You can comment um, here if you are watching this on YouTube. Leave a comment if you're watching on our website, topdogtips.com. You can leave a comment there. Um, if you found us on social media, we are on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. You can like us, follow us, um, ask any questions there. They'll all get back to me. And follow us and stay up to date with all of the videos that I post. I do a lot of great how-to videos, um, some product comparisons, as well as product reviews. We do um, bi-monthly giveaways, so that's something that you guys should stay tuned for. We give away a lot of great products, um, and it's really easy to enter those giveaways, and it's free. So um, be sure you stay tuned for that and follow us on social media to stay up to date with all of that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this how-to video, and I will see you back next time with a video on how to clean your dog's ears. Thanks, guys.